it's a little bit of a Bible study. Excuse me, my, I, I left my notes and I thought I had it in the bag. But thank you, presentation team. Thank you. We sent a copy and uh, we were able to copy that for me to look at. It. So God bless you. Um, our first scripture we're going to read from. Is St. John chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. Is that what you have? A wrong chapter? Have I given you a wrong chapter? Everyone say, Praise the Lord and Lord, that's what I like to I can get it wrong sometimes. That's it. Let's read together. Can we stand for some of these? We're going to read all the scriptures and then speak to you a few minutes and then we're going to pray. Let's read together. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, We have found the science which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and Jesus beheld him. He said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, but thou shalt be called Cephas, which is interpreted a stone. Luke 22, verse 31 to 34. Let's read all these scriptures on the Lord. Luke 22. Verse 31 to 34. Let us read. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as the wind. Let your faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Before we read on, it's a strange statement because it's 22 chapters of Luke. So around two to three years have gone by. So Jesus says to, to Simon, and Simon Peter, he says, you are yet to be converted. You are not converted yet. But when you are converted, strengthen the others. So we can be with Jesus a long time and yet not be fully converted. Everyone say, Lord, Lord. convert me. Convert me. Really convert me, Jesus. Really convert me. All right. The next scripture is Mark 16, verse 16, going back a little bit, verse, sorry, 15 through to verse 18. And they shall, let's read, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We're going to verse 15. 15, 16, 17, and 18. Let's read. Thank you. Let's read. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes 
not shall be done. These are the words of Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They will speak with other tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. How many believers do we have in this place today? The Bible says, he that believes. Who, who's a believer in this place? Well, you will tread on serpents. You will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You shall preach the gospel, and people will be delivered and receive Jesus. As their Lord. Hallelujah. You will speak in tongues. So we're doing some of that verse, but there's more to be done. Amen. And the final one is oh, thank you very much. Sister Paul, I see. The final one is Luke 10, verse 19. Thank you. Let's read. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let's read that one verse again, please. Behold, See, when the enemy sees your potential, 
God has given to you, he steps about a plan normally to pull you back. Yeah. And when he tries to pull you back, it's not obvious because it comes by way of a certain time attitude, the way of a snake. Snakes are very smart creatures. No wonder Adam and Eve were tricked by a serpent. No other animal would have been able to have overcome Adam and Eve. It had to be the serpent that was the most beautiful of beasts at the time. It used to have legs. It had four legs like other animals. And it was the most beautiful in color. And so when the serpent, when Lucifer possessed the serpent, and the serpent began to talk and entwine them in his skillful words to change that which God had put inside them. Today we are coming against every spirit of the serpent. I want all serpents of my life. I don't care if I go upside down and swing by that cross and God throw me over there. I don't care. All I want is every kind of serpentine spirit out to my life. Amen. Amen. I've met servants in churches. Am I saying this serpent's here? I'm not saying that. Not at all. We would have dealt with it by now. But on my first visit, who remember I was talking about the first visit visits when I went to churches and the super soldier day? My first visit. Who remembers me talking about that? Some of you hearing? Some didn't? Yeah, thank you. Got five, five, six of you. I went to a church with a pastor on my first visit in South London. It was interesting that God had said to me while I was preparing, I was doing my face, and I've written out some notes, but I felt the Holy Spirit was saying to me, I was speaking in tongues for a while, and that's really important. Particularly if you're going to speak in a spirit through the church you're visiting. So I was on the floor on my belly, speaking in tongues. I stopped for a few seconds. And I heard the voice of God. The voice of the Holy Spirit spoke into my ear. At that time, I was being used, I was maybe uh, an evangelist. Just started pastoring a little bit. But I was an evangelist, so I'll come to your church to get people born again, saved, giving life to Jesus, and that was it. And maybe God would heal a few people here and there. And that's what would happen. And so, the Lord spoke into my ear and he says exactly these words. He says, tonight you are going to see the demonstration of my power. So I was so grateful. I mean, I was jumping in the room and I was worshiping and I was just jumping away. I don't know, you know, I, I, I take quite a while to prepare. So I'm there. I came straight from work, straight into prayer room. I had a cup of coffee because I fasted the day. And there I was, and God says, Today you're going to see the demonstration of my power. And I can only think of people accepting Jesus and people being healed and getting them ready for, you know, we ask people, Will you, do, are you going to take baptism almost straight away? Or in the next few weeks they come and say, Yes, and they feel the joy of the Lord. And that is as far as the spectrum of my expectation was. And so, 
helping pastors of four or five. You know where they went. Four or five people. I get confused with the church I came from, so it's four. There's five. Five people. There's four. There's four. See, we're counting it through. We'll be exactly. So it was four. The first two I recognize as being something part of that church congregation. So I laid my hands on them and I'm waiting. I was a little bit confused. I said, God, I don't understand. You told me today this is a demonstration of your power and no one was sick from what I could see. And I couldn't work out if anyone wanted to accept Jesus in their lives. So anyway, I, I put my hand on the first person's head and began to pray. And I noticed they were worshiping God and I'm thinking, okay, they're Christian. So I move on to the second one. And then the third was the mother. She brought her daughter with her. So I prayed with her, all members of the church. Then the fourth one, she was the daughter. And I started to pray for her. She needed Jesus. So my attention was with her, for I want her to see Jesus. The next thing I saw, and listen, I'm not saying it's going to happen to us, but this is a powerful church. What God has told me to do is to do some things in the spirit concerning your lives. Right? And so I'm going to do that. What happens at home? What happens at work? What happens in your daily, daily lives? God's going to break some very negative things today off you. Now, listen to this. This is what happened in that particular church. I got to the fourth person, and I, I couldn't believe I turned my eyes like this. The person was on the ground. They only had one arm, not two like this. So I'm, I couldn't believe it, and the pastor looking at me wide-eyed like this, almost as saying, what have you done to our church? I not done anything. It was the power of God came in like he said he would, but I, not in the way that I was expecting. So I looked down and she started to sliver on the ground, on her belly, with no pushing of the legs to move her. She moved like a snake. And she went, I watched her go down on the way. She was cussing. She was swearing. Everyone say cussing. That's the most, that's as far as you can go. She was cussing. Cursing. Cursing is American, so she was cursing, she was swearing, and she went down, down the aisle, like this. I was watching. The pastor got up, the assistant pastor got up, and they're looking at me. What have you brought into their church? And she went down at the back there was the table like we have here. Sorry, no, I'm not moving around tomorrow. Literally under the table, her legs were there and she was coiled up in a circle, fetus, fetus position. And the demons were just talking. I said, oh my God. I said, what is this? What is this? I was shocked. This doesn't happen in church until I found it in Luke chapter 4. When Jesus went into the church just after he got baptized, he went to the synagogue in the church of his day, and there was a man in there who was controlling the church. And then Jesus cast the demon out. Do you think that was finished? I saw that, I walked back, and I'm in shock and horror. I wasn't in any anointing to preach and say hallelujah. I was shocked out of my wits. Then I looked at the next lady. She's cursing bad words at the altar. So I turned around to the pastor like this. I don't know. I turned out, I don't know. And worse than that, they were two officers 
It's not happening here. But there were two officers in the church on the church committee. I had a vision this morning. It's about us. But the great news about us, oh, okay. Kevin, and he snatched it and sold him for us. He took me to the desert. I watched the TV scene of God. And it came to us. And a deliverer came. Don't be forced into a comment 
or discussion. You don't want to be in. Just say, I don't want to be in that. And just be straight about it. And you don't get caught up in the conversational mess and double tongue mess. Someone say amen. amen. Not because serpents, they are powerful in that way. How do, do serpents affect us, our bodies? They affect our health. They use, they might say, well, what's your turn? What's the all this? I'm likely to go and tell us exactly how it all works. I said, I'm not going to do that. I don't need to. I've done 30 years of study of it, and I'm not going to sit here 30 years trying to tell you how it all works. It's going to be madness if I do that. We will have no movement. So some of it you have to trust because of experience, past the world. They use venom. We had a lady. There's no reflection on any of us here because we all have health issues in some sort of way or other. But a lot of things that happen with serpents, they bite you and they release their venom. Do you know someone who is drunk? Someone who just keeps drinking. And you look at them and they never really get drunk. Has anyone ever met people like that? They just like a, they're like a tap. They just drink, 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 drink. Anyone met people like that? Yeah? There's about five of us anymore. You met people like that? You know why they're like that? Does anyone know why? We asked and I know why. Who else knows why? Anyone else knows why? Yeah, you got it. The demon, the serpent is in there and the person is not drinking at all. The, 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 the devil lets the person take a little bit of it, but the rest of it is the demon is drinking the beer. The demon is drinking the wine. And drinking, 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 drinking. And they drink all day long. It's not going to stop them. They, they, because it's gone beyond the human frame of that person's body. And now, now, the spirits are in possession. It's saying that everything that goes on in our lives, after a while, it's not just having sex. It, the sex is uncontrollable because it's gone beyond the person. The sex demon now possesses the body and he lives out his life inside the person's body. Nicotine's the same. You just go right down. At first, it is the person trying something out. But after a while, if they continue, that spirit goes in and the serpent is there. We have two ladies who gave us permission to share this. And I'm going to pray with you. First one, we used to pray at the marriage in the center. The lady came to see us three, four times. We couldn't get to the end of it. And sometimes we pray, they are really frustrated. It's frustrating because you pray one week, in those days it was about two hours of prayer, just for one person. I'll take it back to that first and sort it out for you. Thank you, Lord. Tony. And then uh, I come back the next week in time, another two hours. I come back the following week, another two hours. Are you getting anywhere? We think we are, but to be honest with ourselves, we're not getting in there. That's frustrating. We are, uh, listen, prayers, fastings, thank you. Put your hands together for Deacon Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Session. Oh, 
we're going to do after this. You don't know if you can refer to another ministry that we find sometimes we all have the same blockages. And I asked, what's going on? She says, there's something in her head. She told us before, but I said, what's happening now? She says, it's really pounding in her brain. She says, you're not getting... So we put the oil as usual. We started to pray. And God opened my eyes. Does everyone say, the Lord opened our eyes? That's the prophecy of super soldier. The Lord opened your eyes. We've had some people call. Uh, on the internet, some directly, in ministry, there, God has opened their eyes. It's happened. God opened my eyes, and I saw something this long, that long, but very skinny. It was a mini snake. And it was coming out of her hair. Near the hair strand, and I saw the movement, I saw the I said, gosh, what's that? I thought it was a big caterpillar. It was a mini snake. I'm teaching in the church. I'm teaching. And I comes to that, shouting, God, we saw something encouraging. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We shout the blood and it fell on the ground. I saw it. That long. See the back, that long. It was wiggling on earth. And I asked her, how's she feeling? She says, my head is free. I'm free. I can, I can think straight. So I'm shouting at this thing. It, it wiggled off and went towards the, the wall, which was just about four or five feet away, because it was an prayer that we used to use in America. And she went over there, and it grew real size in front of my eyes. I could not believe what I saw. I don't say that to be frightened to you, because you guys are watching all these films, aren't you? are watching all these crazy films and Hollywood and things blowing up and fire coming out of people's hands and images. You're watching all that. But this was happening to us before these things were in the films. And I saw the snake, the snake, I put my hands around my back, it was coiled that big. It was about a ten foot snake. But spiritually, it resized itself to fit into the person's brain. And that was the beginnings of the breakthrough of our ministry of bringing healing to people that have mental issues. Give the Lord a shout. Let's get that piano, uh, Minister Edward. Let's give it a bang. Let's give the Lord a shout. Thank you. We are of very good stock. Not my stock, the Lord's stock. It's Him. All the glory be to the Lord. All the glory be to Him. All the glory be to him, all the glory be to him. I found there's a lady, two ladies, and one lady and a guy, he could never put on weight. He could never put on weight. He would eat as much as he could, couldn't put weight on. And he was getting skinny and skinny, and he was actually becoming a little bit dangerous now. But what we cast out, what came out of him was a snake. It was a banner. The banner that's put in the body. Some people don't have a snake, they might just a fight. And the banner goes in and disorients all the, the areas of digestion, nutrition, minerals, vitamins, and mess everything up. It's hard. We try to lose his heart. We try to put on his heart. And so these are the things that God has told him to pray in general over you. And they're going to leave you. And you're going to be happier. I'm not talking anybody's business. Don't even think. But whatever you're fighting behind the scenes, there's no one knows about. 
God has seen your need. He's seen your want. We've got to put Psalm 23 in its proper perspective. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not need. Is it, I shall not need? It says, I shall not want. So what you want from God today, if you say, Lord, deliver me today, he will do it. Amen. I saw the serpents leaving. I don't care. I'm not saying anybody's got a serpent, but there's a serpentine influence behind it. Whether close or distance, whether family, whether it's bloodline, whether it's coming down the generations, whatever it is today, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're saying it's coming out. Somebody rejoice and give God glory right now. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I was in that desert. And you know what the Lord said? He says, when an evil spirit is cast out, it will go to where? The dry places, which is the desert. I believe God. Is there anybody else in this place who believes God? Can name it for 
yourself. Tell God what you want to put in this bag. You tell him under your breath. You tell him tonight. You tell him now. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Tell Jesus. Tell Jesus.
of all the negatives, God. Where Satan wanted to take my life before I was 25. I'm declaring it will never come back. I will live my full days on this earth. So shall you. You will find a good husband, those who are not married yet. You should shout me down. You will find a good husband. You will find a good wife. In the name of Jesus, your children will come under ground and you anointing of good behavior. We will be the spirit of rebellion from your children.